Welcome to the Newsmakers Podcast. I'm Billy Hollowell, and this is a show where we go behind the headlines every day to bring you an interview with a pastor, entertainer, politician, or other notable news figure. And this is a show, again, it's daily, but it's based on our weekly TV show, which is also called Newsmakers. You can watch it on the CBN News Channel and also on our YouTube page. And on this show, every day, we dive deep. It's a little more longer form with one of the people who you will often see on our Newsmakers show or across the CBN News platforms. On today's Newsmakers, deconstruction has become one of the most frequently used faith terms of late. It is sparking a lot of debate, a lot of reaction, and today we are going to have author Elisa Childers on the show to talk all about the subject as well as her new book, The Deconstruction of Christianity. With no further ado, here is Elisa Childers. Why do you think deconstruction has become such a fad? That's the word Mm. I'll use in the church today. I do think it's a fad, although a lot of people would say it's not a fad. It's actually this, you know, real experience that happens. But I think it can be proven to be a fad because you can trace it back through its philosophical roots and the postmodern philosophies that gained steam in the 60s. But I think it's become a fad for several reasons. I think there are some legitimate reasons. People have encountered spiritual abuse or there have been some uh, sort of maybe a legalistic environment that they grew up in, and they're they're looking for a way to get rid of the bad ideas but hold on to the good ones. But the problem with what we see in the deconstruction movement is that very often what people decide are bad beliefs are actually historic Christian doctrines like original sin and the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross and, and uh, theological kind of doctrines that really define Christianity like that. And so I think it's become a fad also because of social media. I really don't think you have the deconstruction movement movement as we see it today without social media. Um, And I think there's a little bit of a social contagion aspect to it as well, because that hashtag of deconstruction, there's a lot of false information in there. There's a lot of claims that are made about Christian theology that are not true, but there's 2 million views on the video and 200,000 likes. So people don't really question it. And it kind of gives them a reason to get a foot out the door, I think, in many cases. Yeah, it it feels like there are people out there who say, oh, this is a healthy form of doubt. Everybody should deconstruct. I mean, you'll hear this line of thinking quite a bit. How do you respond to that? Well, I I think it's important to always ask somebody what they mean when they use the word deconstruction, because people use the word in all sorts of different ways. You might have one person who says deconstruction is when you take the faith tradition you were given as a child and you measure it against scripture and you you go to scripture and you say, okay, I think that was an unbiblical belief. I want to get rid of that one. Other people mean it to just be engaging maybe some serious nagging doubts they've been having and they'll use the word deconstruction. And I think it's good to engage our doubt and ask hard questions and take the faith tradition that our parents gave us and test it against scripture. But what we find in the deconstruction hashtag is that's not what they're doing. And so in deconstruction, it's really more about a shift of authority from an external source of authority for truth to the authority of the self. And that's what we see over and over in that hashtag, which is where this is largely manifesting. What do you think, and it's almost a silly question to ask because I think we know the answer, but what do you think the cumulative effect of this has been culturally, not just the deconstruction, Mm. but that turn into the self that we're experiencing Mm. as a culture? It, I think it's it's having devastating effects because it's causing people to really turn against their ultimate purpose, which is to love God, to be, to worship him and be in his presence. And what we're doing culturally is basically telling people you should follow your heart because what you find in there is going to be good and so of course doctrinally as christians we know that you can do all the self-introspection you want and what you're going to find inside of yourself are desires that are likely in contradiction to what's actually good so those things actually need to be changed we need to repent and turn to christ but with this whole kind of follow your heart live your truth movement um, it's caused people to turn very inward and just go with what feels right to them and that is actually what we see in the deconstruction movement because theological beliefs are not assessed based on if they line up with scripture or not. They're assessed based on someone's internal sense of resonance with if if this feels toxic to me or if it feels healthy to me or if it feels oppressive to me. And so those toxic and oppressive beliefs are eschewed. But then, you know, we can't actually know what's toxic unless we know what's true, right? So if you tell someone they're a sinner and they say, oh, that's toxic. Well, it's only toxic if it's not true. If it is true, it's the proper diagnosis for the cure that's coming. But sadly, our culture sees that as a toxic thing to say to somebody. 
Well, and how does anybody, I mean, it's interesting, even from a secular perspective, this idea that billions of people can walk around with their own standard of truth and that that somehow will make any semblance of sense or order. I mean, anybody should be able to look at that and say, this is crazy, but yet here we are. That's right. literally what we're telling people, that they can do that. Just go out and make your own truth and everything will work out well. It's not working out so well, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. And I think that's because culture kind of sees truth in two different ways. I don't think most people walk around as if truth is just relative to each person, especially when it comes to things like banking and science and mathematics, although that's changing too. <laughs> uh, but I think what our culture has done is taken things like religion and morality, and they've put them in the category of preference. So like, if I told you, uh, you know, vanilla is not the best flavor of ice cream. And if you think vanilla is the best flavor of ice cream, you should change that. Or if we are all at dinner and you order steak and I order shrimp and I say, you should have ordered shrimp because shrimp is better. Everybody would think that's weird, right? So when we do that with religion, when we say, well, no, actually there's an objective truth and Jesus was who he said he was and you need to deal with you know, your position with him and you need to repent and turn to him. What they hear is, why are you telling me to have steak instead of shrimp? Because in the mind of culture, that's really more in the realm of opinion. Whereas some of the other things like lab logic and science and math, they would say, yeah, everybody can access that truth. So it, it, it's sort of, we have to untie knots for people and show them that actually religion and morality are in the math and science and facts and logic category, not the favorite flavor of ice cream category. Okay, so The Deconstruction of Christianity, which is your new book, what are you hoping to address with this? What impact are you hoping to have? Well, this book is a book about deconstruction, but it's not the book you're gonna give to the person in your life who is in deconstruction. We did not write it for them. We wrote it for their parents and their pastors and their brothers and sisters and their spouses. So our hope is to help the church understand what this is, what is happening in the deconstruction movement, and then hopefully equip them to be able to minister to and walk with people in their lives who are going through it. Yeah, I mean, that. it seems like this is a great guidebook and tool book for people who don't know what to do. I think a lot of times we respond in anger when this mm -hmm. happens, especially a spouse, a aunt, an uncle, a son, a daughter. How do we need, and I know the book's gonna tell us that, but you know, just give us a little bit of a recap. How do we need to respond to that? Yeah, well, we did spend quite a bit of uh, time talking about that in the book because it's so important, but I'll just give you the broad flyover. First, you have to understand the nature of what's happening to your loved one. They have already decided you're a toxic person because of what you believe. It's not just that they disagree with you. They actually think you're harmful. And you have to understand that because the impetus to disconnect from their churches and even their blood families, sadly, at times is very strong. And then find community online with people that are going to affirm their personal truth. And so understanding that you're probably not going to fix their theology over coffee. So what you want to do is assess what is the most urgent need. And the most urgent need might just be maintaining the relationship. In fact, you might just have a fragile window of opportunity to maintain that relationship. And so what we tell people is kind of counterintuitive for Christians, but it's okay to step back and not try to fix them right away, but listen, understand, try to maintain that relationship. But then there's so much we can do in the meantime. We should not underestimate the power of prayer. We can pray for our loved ones. We can live the beauty of the gospel out in front of them. Because I have done a lot of research in this movement and it's a very dark and toxic place. And I think when people start getting to the bottom of that rainbow and discover there's no pot of gold there, they might come back and wanna to talk to you when they've seen the peace of Jesus lived out in your life. Well, the book is The Deconstruction of Christianity. Appreciate you taking the time and joining us today. Oh, thanks so much. That's all for today's Newsmakers podcast. Be sure to tune in for the next episode of the show and also head over to the CBN News YouTube channel and the CBN News channel to watch Newsmakers every week. We'll see you soon.